Hey, you might not recognize me uh, with these headphones. They're actually my old Audio Technica ES10. Come with my full recommendation and have for a long time. You can mod them. I mod them. Got a little bit of goes in there that like shuts down the, the tizzy highs a bit. But that's not why we're here today. Why we're here today is to basically say goodbye. Goodbye to a, a microphone that I've used for years. No, I haven't used it really well. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I, I don't really know that much about audio. I have a couple of good ideas uh, every once in a while, and, and then I try to popularize them on my channel, which doesn't make any sense because this channel's not popular, so I, I just show the world, you know? Uh, anyway, one of the ideas I have today in order to say goodbye to my Audio Technica AT899 mid, mid to high end uh, lapel microphone is basically to compare it back to back with the microphone that it's that is replacing it. When I say replacing it, of course, that is kind of a mistake. That is because the, uh, what is it called? I always forget the name. It's um, Comica, here, let me see. I'm going to read the read the thing here. It's more an itch my ear. It's good. The Comica CVM VO20 uh, is nowhere near as good a microphone as the Audio Technica. It also is nowhere near as expensive. The Audio Technica, I think, is something like $250 US. Um, in Japan, it's a little bit more money. I ordered it here. I used it for about two years for this channel. Uh, for a lot of the, the talking head videos that I was doing, where I was like uh, showing how to use a camera or whatever. Gosh, I've got to clean up my studio a bit. I used it for that. I used it for the stuff downstairs, Thursday thing, interesting products, everything for about two years. And one of the reasons I'm passing up or getting rid of it basically is because as good a microphone as it is, and it is a good microphone, it's a little bit unwieldy putting into uh, a portable uh, PCM recorder. It sticks out way too much. It comes with an included battery box, which boosts up the sensitivity and, and probably the sound quality overall. You can plug it directly in with an adapter to a 48 volt uh, phantom output or input or whatever, but you, you're you not gonna have enough, enough power for it. You're gonna need uh, to really gain up everything. So you're gonna get a lot more noise, etc. So with that battery box, you can keep all the noise down and just best DR and all that. However, that thing, and you'll see it in the video, it's like it's like that long or so, and it's a real bugger to like stick in a pocket or whatever. And so I'm um, sending it on. Uh, someone at Yahoo Auction bought it for me. Thank you very much. And uh, I just wanted to show you today what it sounds like next to the Comica that's replacing it. Again, the Comica, I'm not going to use that often because I, I prefer to sit down at a desk using something like this and maybe uh, no longer show my face as, as much as I really have to in videos because it takes a lot more work to show my face and it's not gonna necessarily make a better video anyway. So what I will be doing here is uh, from the moment I attach it to my shirt and you guys who are sound like producers and engineers don't, don't, don't criticize this bit. I mean, you can, but keep it silent. I'm not telling you how to use the microphones. I'm not telling you the way, the read, all the specific reasons that are you know, empirically tested why one is better than the other and one's got better sound and one blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just going to attach it to my shirt. One on the left, the Comica. One on the right, the Audio Technica, or maybe a little bit closer than that. Then I'm going to read off a bit of text simultaneously recorded into my Yamaha mixer in stereo. Uh, and then later on, you'll get to see the sound waves next to each other. And then I will adjust them for gain, essentially, to make sure that they sound basically as loud as each other so that I can play back left and right to you and you can hear how they sound next to each other in, in as similar volume as possible and you can decide what you prefer and then of course do it without that bit also introduced and then maybe do a little bit of EQ. No, I'm not going to do the EQ in the right way. I'm not an engineer and basically you guys can just see what you like. Oh, I'll also do a keyboard test so you can hear what it sounds like in a room that's unsoundproof, that's basically got hard wall here, hard wall here, hard walls there, bunch of metal stuff in the room um, and which isn't soundproofed or ready for sound at all. This is a test just to show anyone out there who's like browsing Yahoo or or Amazon or, or the net and they're like, I wonder if a cheap $40 uh, XLR mic can compare with a mid to mid high end XLR mic. And I wonder if some non-professional has compared them and I'll be like, hey, it's me. I'll do it. I'll do it for you right now. And before we get started, hey, buy a hat. It's 20 bucks. Uh, locally sourced literally by me I go to a shop pick up these these construction hats and then I I uh, well probably made in China or Bangladesh 
but I find them myself. Like I am literally scouring the, the shelves. I, I, I draw on the logo myself with a hand note with a serial number, but I had 20 bucks shipped to you. That includes all my labor, driving, uh, drawing, writing, sending off, all that. So pff, I'm losing money on it. It's a great deal. I'm losing money on it. Buy a hat. Buy a hat. Why am I stupid of me? Yeah, buy a hat. Or uh, join my Patreon. Pitiful. Need to work on it a lot. Got a Twitter as well. Anyway, check it out. It's in the links down below. All right. Without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this microphone on to annotate what's going on as I click on one of these, these microphones. And then I will turn off this microphone once I have the two microphones connected. And what I will do is type out a selected passage from my previous review so you can hear the keyboard sounds and then I will read back uh, into these well basically looking at the screen straight out like that and you can hear my voice in real time from left channel to right channel equalized and unequalized or normalized and not normalized whatever like that and then you can just compare them and that's it so we're now checking out you can still hear stuff right hey check it out I'm now, I'm looking at the studio, or what is it called, sound booth recording, and there's definitely more sound. Both of these are set to middle gain. There's no microphone padding on. The gain is right in the middle on the soundboard. I have uh, highs, lows, and mids all set right to the middle, so there's nothing extra going into the sound. So what you should be hearing is just basically flat, even Steven from both microphones. Let me just see if I didn't forget to test or check one thing on the Audio Technica. I'm just going to lean over. I just checked it out and the Audio Technica has the flat thing on. It doesn't have like the bass or the high roll off. So this is bog standard what you'll hear in a completely, well, an air conditioning running, uh, hard disk running, computer fan running, uh, unsoundproof room that's not the best for this sort of thing. There we are. So that should give you sort of a, hopefully a good, good a reference as to what, how both microphones sound as I'm typing on a quiet microphone, the MacBook one, as well as a louder one, which happens to be the Matthias. Now in the background, you'll probably hear my daughter singing. I'm supposed to be napping right now. Uh, so that's a good uh, indication as well as how much sort of peripheral noise each of these is going to pick up. Ken Rockwell's slur, Dirty Little Foiklanders, was right on the money, especially after Koshina picked up the label. Back then, VM lenses were small, poorly finished next to the Leica counterparts, and more apt to break. <laughs> Good reading, by the way. That was awesome. Next. Today, they are nearly on par. While I didn't like the 40mm 1.2 VM's draw style or general haptics, I appreciate what they tried to do with the focal length. And today, every of their efforts is gold. So I'm touching my shirt, touching my belly. Sticking out a bit, gotta work on that. And this is up where the cable, where's the cable? Cable's over here. Touching the, where the cable's wrapping over here and I'm gonna cut, touch over here a little bit closer. You've already heard the, the scratchiness, what it sounds like when I'm touching the filter directly. So I'm just gonna touch my belly. It's got both cables there, so you should hear something, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to touch up here a little bit farther. Looks like there's a little bit more feedback coming into the to the uh, microphone or the monitor. Touch the cable that goes directly to the mo to the mo audio technica, and then the windscreen. Where's the windscreen? That's oh, right. It's right there. Touching the windscreen directly. That's what it sounds like. Wait. 
All right, uh, like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Thank you very much. I love you all in peace and love. Cheers. Yeah.